This is room number one, a tiny, low-ceilinged room with bare stone walls lit by a single candle. The smell of wood smoke is from the fire burning in the hat. There's a leather-bound book on the table beside you. Go ahead. Pick it up. The title says Mercury, or The Secret and Swift Messenger. And it has a subtitle showing how a man may, with privacy and speed, communicate his thoughts to a friend at any distance. It was published in England in 1641, and it's about secret messages. The fellow who wrote it, a vicar named John Wilkins, collected all the information he could find about invisible inks and secret codes. And because he was also a mathematician, he wondered whether or not it was possible to create a new kind of code in which the smallest possible number of symbols could stand in for the whole alphabet. Two letters of the alphabet, being transposed through five places, will yield 32 differences, and so will more than serve four and 20 letters. Four and 20 letters. So no J or U, because back then, J and I were interchangeable, and so were U and V. In Wilkins's code, A is A, 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 A. B is a, 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 B. C is A, 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 B, A. D is A, A, B, A, A. And so on it goes until it gets to X. B, A, B, A, B. Y. B, A, B, B, A. And Z. B, A, B, B, B. And so the word code becomes A, 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 B, A. A, B, B, A, B. A, A, B, A, 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 B, A, A, A. <coughs> Each letter of the alphabet has its own unique difference. For John Wilkins, a difference is a piece of information that exists because of the contrast between two things, like two bells with different sounds or a flag at full or half mast. Anything that can provide a difference, Wilkins <coughs> reckons. Also, has the potential to communicate meaning so long as whoever is sending the signal and whoever is receiving it have agreed in advance what the meaning will be. The signal fire burning on the hill tells the city that the battle is won. The blood on the doorpost tells the angel of death to pass over this house. The lit cigarette tells the spy that to flee the country her cover is blown. Without the agreement, it's just blood or fire with no meaning at all. Come on, let's go through to the next room. Step into room number two. A large, dark, air-conditioned room in a museum. Mounted on a plinth and lit by a spotlight is a tree log, approximately 75 centimetres long and 20 centimetres deep. It has been hollowed by hand, leaving two horizontal slits. These slits are different sizes, and when you strike them, they give you two different tones. <coughs> this is a talking drum from Guinea in West Africa, and it is roughly 300 years old. Do not touch the drum. <coughs> you break it, I break you. That's the rule. It is called a talking drum because it is used to talk over long distances. Before the arrival of European colonists, People in West Africa used these drums to communicate, and they could do this because the languages they spoke were tonal. The same basic <coughs> sounds can mean different things depending on the tone you use. These drums compress the languages down to two tones, a high one and a low one. sense, but it does, and the sound carries over a long way, and the messages can be picked up from one drummer to another and relayed down the length of a river, or as we think of it now, across a country. Until the 19th century, this was the most effective long-distance communication system on earth. Step through that door behind you.